Good evening, everyone. Before we proceed to our proper discussion, let's wait for your other classmates.
Okay, so good evening everyone. Good evening, PBM, UNS, PBL, ICT, and HE. So, upon setting, wala pa yung ibang class. So, ang nandito ay ilan from PBM, UNS, ICT, and HE. Okay, so before we start, that is like if you can see my screen. And if you can hear my mic very well. Okay, so it's a yes. So we're already done with chapter five, quantitative, uh, quantitative uh, research methodology. So we're already in chapter six. So tapos na tayo sa chapter five, chapter six na tayo. So this is all about data collection for quantitative research. Okay, so for lesson one, practices in collecting quantitative data. So an paano kaya tayo nagko-collect ng mga data? No? So I think uh, yung iba sa inyo familiar na dito kasi di ba nung grade 11, nag-survey ata kayo or na-experience nyo na ba mag-survey? Hoping so na ano na 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 experience nyo yung mag collect ng ano mag collect ng data. Okay. So first question: How do quantitative data collection procedures differ in terms of the type? data produced. Okay, hindi pa rin ba, sa iba ba, hindi pa rin marinig yung boses ko? Mahina pa din ba yung mic? Or, okay, dinig naman. Uh, siguro na na lang, palakasan na lang ng volume. If hindi pa, hindi pa rin dinig. Okay, hello, dinig na ba? Ayan, sige, okay na. Nilapitan, lumapit na lang ako sa laptop. Okay, so how do quantitative data collection procedures differ in terms of the type data produced? Okay, so yun, um, yung mga data na in-expect natin, yun, depende yan sa how do we collect no, yung data natin. So at the end of this discussion, we should be able to identify the different types of data in quantitative research and explain the different quantitative data collection methods and then apply the appropriate instruments for data collection. Okay, so as a worker in a media company, you were tasked to find out about the preferences of the masses on television shows. Okay, so yun, no? uh, parang bilang isang worker sa media company, meron ka daw task no? to, to know the preferences of the masses on television shows. Ano ba yung favorite nilang television shows? So, ano, paano ka mag-gather ng data? Ano kaya yung mga questions? Anong type na, na collections method ang gagawin mo or instrument yung gagamitin mo para makuha mo yung appropriate na data or result na kailangan mo? You can use interview, but pag pag masses kasi mas better kung survey no through google forms or if ano yan yung parang uh, mamimigay ka ng paper na with question tapos itatali mo na lang okay uh, next research data and its forms research data are recorded materials which are evidence based and collected from systematic observations for analysis Okay, so yun, um, ito daw ay isang recorded materials na evidence-based and collected from uh, systematic observation. While yung information naman is a process data which forms meaningful context 
making it useful for research. Maaring from research data, after mong masummarize, magkaroon ng conclusion, then that can be an information na that, uh, that can be used for another research. Okay, so uh, examples of data in quantitative research. So, di ba merong qualitative research? So, iba rin yung mga examples ng data na kailangan doon or data na ina-expect natin. Sa so quantitative din, meron ding iba't ibang klase ng data. So, for quantitative data, and quantitative data vary in forms and can be classified into primary and secondary data which may be acquired in several ways. So, meron na ba kayong idea no, kung ano ba yung mga primary and secondary data? Okay, so when we say primary data are based on the first-hand observations and experiences, while secondary data are interpreted data based on primary source data. So, parang na-discuss ko na to parang mga last chapters. If you remember, ano ba yung mga types ng primary data? Saan kaya natin siya nakukuha, itong primary data? And yung secondary data, sa naman natin nakukuha? May idea kayo? Kaya tayo nakakakuha ng secondary data and uh, tayo nakakakuha ng primary data. If na, kung naaalala nyo yung last na topic. Anyone guys? May nakakaalala ba sa inyo kung ano ba yung mga sample ng primary data and yung secondary data? Non? Wala? Wala nakakaalala? Okay, sige. Oh, okay, for the primary data, uh, ito, makukuha natin siya sa, siyempre, di ba, sinabi nga dito is first hand. Meaning, galing talaga siya doon sa mga nakapag-observe and then yung totoong naka-experience nung senaryo. Okay? So, for example, isa sa mga, pag, alam mo, pag sa mga, ano din, di ba, sa mga korte, ganyan, uh, isa sa mga basis, yan, uh, sabi, ni, sabi ni Joy Ann, ang secondary, ang sample doon ng secondary is yung mga articles. Tapos, kapag primary naman, may direct access. Yes, tama, no? May direct access tayo to, doon sa mga naka-experience. While yung secondary naman is, uh, for example, yung mga articles. Yan. Uh, same. So articles, mga books, ganun. Okay, so, i-ano natin, explain further natin. So, for the first hand or yung primary, primary data, isa sa mga sample nito is yung mga journal and diary entries. Okay? Or for example, yung mga interviews din doon sa mga naka-experience, no? Yan, yung mga naka-experience nung, ano, nung senaryo na yon kapag in-interview natin, yun na yung, ano, first-hand data natin, primary data natin. Kumbaga, mas, ano siya, mas legit siya compared sa secondary uh, data. Kasi, di ba, yung mga secondary data, that can, uh, that might be an interpretation lang or uh, parang opinion lang ng mga nakabasa or nakakuha nung, uh, na, nung nakakuha ng mga primary data. Yan, yung secondary, sabi ni Rochelle Loreja, so secondary data means yung mga data collected by someone else earlier, like um, survey, observation, questionnaire, personal interview, etc., government publication, website, books, journal articles. Ayan. Pero yung, ano, uh, yung survey kasi, prima, I think primary data siya, yung survey. Yan, kasi galing yung data kasi na yun, kinukuha natin from the the one who experienced it no yan i think in survey isa yan sa mga primary data kasi kinukuha natin yung data from ano from the one who experienced or observed the scenario okay for the journal and 
uh, diary entries contain recorded uh, records and documentation during the data gathering process. Okay, so kunyari, ano, uh, uh, we want to, uh, parang gusto natin magkaroon ng mag-gather ng data about uh, history or about uh, stories of someone and then isa sa mga magandang basis is yung journal and diary entries. Kung sino talaga yung totoong naka-experience nun. Okay. Uh, evaluative records are based on evaluating projects that depict rates and responses among a sample population. For example, business researcher may use evaluative records in a month for analysis. Parang ano rin to, parang uh, isa sa mga sample din na survey. And if you want to check yung, uh, aside from survey yan, gagawa ka rin ng sarili mong evaluative records. For example, we want to check if progressive ba yung performance ng isang company. Then you'll check yung mga financial statements nila. Then if check mo yung progress nila from for the for the five years, for example, 2019 to 2024. Then, ano, uh, makakagather ka ng data na nag increase yung sales. Then, uh, nag increase din yung cash. Yan. So, Pag pwede, pwede ka magkaroon ng analysis na nagpo-progress na siya. So that can be a, uh, that can be first hand kasi ayun ang, ang pinagbasihan mo naman doon is yung real time or yung financial statements. Artifacts, specimen and laboratory samples. Yan are seen in experimental research in varying fields. Some artifacts vary from coins to tools, while specimens and laboratory samples may be animals and plants. Framework and methodologies. Yeah, as long as yung yung ano yung yung, fra yung framework at methodologies na gagamitin natin is galing talaga don sa original author. Hindi siya pwedeng na-paraphrase lang or nakita lang natin sa ibang, ginamit lang ng ibang researcher for their uh, research. So, dapat, ano, meron siyang, pag, di ba, pag nagawa tayo ng review and related literature, kapag gumamit ko ng uh, frameworks or theoretical frameworks, ayan, uh, hina-highlight natin kung kanino ba nang galing yung theoretical framework na yun. Okay? But if conceptual framework naman siya, which is originally made by the, the researcher, siya talaga mismo gumawa ng framework na yun and methodologies na yun that can be uh, primary data. Yan. Pero again, no, kapag nakakita tayo ng framework and methodologies na parang dinescribe lang and explain lang ng ibang researcher, pero di naman talaga sila gumawa talaga ng framework and methodologies, secondary data doon. So framework and methodologies are data found in scientific journal articles based on experimental research results. These may contain different processes used by researchers to come up with valid results. Survey forms and polls, just like new evaluative records, and allow researchers to gather collective information regarding certain topics and phenomena, which may be summarized for interpretation and analysis. Okay, so pag itong survey forms and polls, pag na-summarize na to, at na-interpret na ito at na-analyze to ng ibang researcher, magiging ano na siya, secondary data na siya. Okay? So yung survey itself, yun, ano yun, uh, primary data yun. Hmm. Okay, next, official statistics. Yan, uh, kung di ba, aside from the survey, kapag yan, uh, niran to statistic, which is hindi naman na-interpret, hindi naman yan na, 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 na manipulate ng ordinary or mga researcher for their own opinion. Kasi kapag yan niran sa statistic, hindi naman yan pwedeng describe by their own opinion. May talagang specific yan na sagot. 
Yung katulad ng last na uh, elections, di ba? May mga surveys. And then, which is a primary data na, and then after na survey, niraran yan ng mga statistic, then that will be the official statistic. Primary data pa din siya. Pero pag yun, in-interpret ng mga researcher, nagkaroon sila ng opinion, nagkaroon sila ng mga um, suggestion, then yung mga suggestion and yung opinions ng mga researcher, ano na lang yun, secondary data na lang yun. Okay, so official statistics is data gathered by an official body of the government that provides information on a large scale of samples within a community, province, region, and country. Always remember, yung mga gumagawa ng mga statistic na to, mga license yan, and mga professionals yan. So hindi natin sila pwedeng i-judge kapag ito yung mga lumabas sa mga surveys. Kasi meron tayong software wherein nilaran lang natin doon yung mga lumabas sa survey tapos lalabas na kung ano yung result. So, hindi nila, na na, hindi nila pwedeng i-manipulate yun. And hindi na naman yun by their opinion lang. Okay? So, meron talagang formulas na ginagamit, meron software na ginagamit para ma-run yung uh, survey data at ma-provide ma yung specific na result. Uh, for the secondary data naman, web information refers to any information accessed through the internet which may be used to support the research work. Okay, so for example, Wikipedia. Ayan. So normally kapag magawa ka ng research, lalo na kapag mga college or master degree, yung mga Wikipedia, yung mga Pinterest, yan, hindi yan inaalaw as, uh, as part of the um uh, yung mga thesis or research no kapag naglagay ka ng Wikipedia as your references hindi yon tinatanggap okay so ano ba yung mga sample ng mga ng mga sites na pwedeng maging legit uh, legitimate na sources natin for example yung mga .gov .ph .edu ayan pero pag mga .com mga ano lang yan, mga parang ano pa, uh, in doubt pa, or parang hindi pa siya ganun, no? Even, even yung mga ano, even yung mga uh, medias natin is a secondary data na, no? So, it is only based on their observation and then on their opinion. So, part pa rin sila ng secondary data. So, depende yun sa interpretation nila, depende rin yun sa nakita nila. So, hindi sila yung primary data natin. Okay? So, web information refers to any information access through internet which may be used to support the research work. Again, yung Wikipedia, hindi yan ano, hindi yan legitimate na source pag nagawa na tayo ng thesis or research paper. Okay. Next is yung articles from journals, news articles, and published research. Okay, so yun, uh, kunyari, yun nga, um, parang meron tayong nabasang articles, tapos dinadescribe niya yung nagawa na or na-publish ng research or journals or, or um, news article, then magiging ano na siya, magiging secondary data na siya. Parang kumbaga, ikaw, nagbibigay ka ng opinion sa isang ano na, uh, nagbibigay ka ng opinion Uh, for the primary data na nakita mo. So, provide existing information about certain issues and phenomenon which may, be, may, which may have happened in the past that supports the current research. You remember, different data collection procedures produce different types of data. It is important to determine which type of research data is needed to know which data collection uh, procedure to use. Okay, so quantitative data collection, the, the collection of quantitative data is predetermined by the type of data collected and the sampling used in research. <laughs> okay, so according to Waliman 2011 typical or typical quantitative data collection practices include administering quantitative surveys, 
quantitative observation and various types of experiments. So how do quantitative data collection uh, procedures differ in terms of the type of data produced? So quantitative survey makes use of questionnaires that contain close and dead questions with given answers for the respondents to choose from. So ang kinaibahan ng qualitative survey sa quantitative survey or qualitative interview versus the quantitative survey is that yung qualitative kasi is open-ended question. So meaning may mga follow-up questions until ma-receive ma mo or maging contented ka doon sa magiging sagot nung uh, interviewee mo. While sa quantitative, close-ended question, meaning walang follow-up questions. So uh, usually ang mga questions natin dito is yung mga what, mga when, tapos who, mga ganon. Yung parang may specific ng sagot. Unlike kapag qualitative kasi usually parang mga how, parang more likely meron pang explanation kapag qualitative. So mahahaba yung i-expect nating sagot doon. Tapos i-write down natin yun. While kapag quantitative survey, yan. Um, Close-ended siya, so may, pwedeng ang mga sagot is nasa option or i-rate 1 to 5 or merong specific na sagot. No? And then, close-ended na siya. Wala nang follow-up. Like, uh, explain further such as that. So, qualitative lang yun. Okay, so, quantitative survey. So, ang advantage nito is convenient for the large populations and geographical areas. And gener uh, generalized results. So, meaning, a quantitative survey or I mean, kapag ang research natin is yung result is kailangan nating malaman from a large population. Quantitative research talaga yung gagamitin natin. But if yung research natin is parang sa specific ka lang na topic na parang ang makakasagot lang nun is specific person, such for example, mga president or owner, owner ng mga ganitong business na malaki, uh, kung yung empleyado ka doon and you want to improve or uh, you want to suggest innovations, so ang i-interview mo doon yung mga owners lang or yung boss mo, so that can be a qualitative. So yun, ang um, disadvantage nito limited due to predetermined choices. So kapag yun nga lang, ang disadvantage nito is um, parang syempre no, pag gumawa ka ng, ng quantitative survey, meron lang silang mga options. So parang doon lang, parang limited lang doon sa options na yun yung magiging sagot nila. Okay, di ba? Di na sila pwede mag-suggest or pwede, di na sila pwede mag-explain. So ganun. Difficult to control responses since malaki nga yung population natin. So meron dyan iba hindi tinatamad sagutan. Yung iba naman dyan hindi, hindi honest sa pagsagot. Hindi mo na siya ganun ka mamamonitor. So, yun. Uh, isa, isa yun sa mga disadvantage ng quantitative. That's why kapag quantitative yung gagamitin natin, merong mga uh, allowance for error, like 5%. Like, in-expect mo yung 5% na population mo or ng sample mo is hindi sasagot ng, uh, hindi sasagot with honesty and hindi sasagot ng maayos or parang bara-bara lang, hula-hula lang. Okay? So, merong mga allowance for that. Like 5% or 10% kung conservative ka. And another advantage, ayan, uh, anony anonymity of responses. Since yun nga, uh, sa sobrang dami ng, sa sobrang laki ng population mo, hindi mo na ganun kakabisado kung sino ba yung taong sumagot nun. And usually, like, uh, usually optional yung name kapag mga quantitative research. Objectivity, uh, cost efficient. Yeah. So cost efficient meaning, kasi di ba, you can use naman Google form and then, or papers lang. Ayan. Unlike ng kapag qualitative kasi, more likely maglalaan ka kasi ng time para ma-interview mo yung interview mo. 
hindi lang siya basta bibigay mo lang yung papel. Kasi nga open-ended yun eh. May mga follow-up questions ka dapat or recorded mo talaga yung ano niya, yung sinasagot niya. Unlike kapag quantitative, since close-ended naman siya, parang pwede mo na lang isend via email or or through Google Form. Ayan. So, mabilis lang yun. Or, and cost-efficient siya. Disadvantage and restriction in summary and analysis. So, meaning, hindi mo siya ganun ka masasummarize. Unlike ng kapag qualitative, mapapakapal mo talaga yung research mo. It's because, syempre, no, kapag survey, quantitative survey tayo, nirarun lang yan sa, sa statistic eh. And kung ano yung result na ibigay ng statistic, hanggang doon lang yung pwede mong gawa ng summary and gawa ng conclusion. Difficulty in monitoring the response. Since yun nga, uh, merong an anonymity and uh, kumbaga tawag dito walang names, walang optionals kasi ang paglagay ng name kapag, kapag quantitative survey. So meron kang difficulty in monitoring the responses. Hindi mo rin alam kung sino yung sumagot na with honesty and mang maayos. Okay, so example, satisfaction surveys on food and beverages in marketing research. Survey research on degree program preferences of high school students. Okay, so quantitative interview makes use of standardized question and structure interview formats. These interviews may take the forms of face-to-face -face interviews, telephone calls, and web web-based interviews. Madalas din tong ginagawa ng mga ano eh, ng mga nasa call center. So after mong pagbigyan ng customer service, then they will ask if nasatisfy ka ba with their customer service and then uh, i-rate mo sila if if nakipag-usap pa sila ng maayos, na uh, na, na parang kumbaga na ayos ba yung mga problem mo dun sa product. Yeah. So, gano, no? that can be a telephone call or web-based or face-to-face. -face. So, face-to-face -face interviews gather data through personal interaction between the researcher and the respondents using structured interview questions. Yeah. So, yun. Uh, yun nga, close-ended din siya kaya mabilis din matatapos yung ano, interview eh. Pero, parang impractical na din kasi kapag uh, kapag quantitative yung research mo, tas mag interview ka pa. Tapos structured naman yung question. So, parang medyo impractical siya. Okay, pag, uh, ang advantage, open communication, pro, prompt replies during clarification. So, meaning, uh, isa din sa, siguro may advantage din yung face-to-face. -face. It's because nakikita mo kung, kung honest yung tao sa pagsagot eh. Parang if you want if you really want to make sure na na honest yung mga results na natatanggap mo or ina-expect ng result okay din tong interview yun nga lang yun nga uh, medyo hassle siya kasi nga unlike ng kapag kapag Google form ka hindi ka na makapagkita eh di ba okay lang kapag face to face yun, kailangan mo kasi makapagkita and then yun nga lang syempre mas na monitor mo if with honesty yung pagsagot disadvantage unsuitable for large population and can be expensive and time consuming just like uh, what i have said telephone calls done through the use of telephone or existing online calling platforms such as uh, messenger as well as in uh, phone call walang walang face to face like ano lang uh, voice lang ang advantage ito uh, uh comparing to the face to face that's expensive and more convenient can be conducted despite different location but disadvantage time consu consuming pa din naman siya but not as uh, time consuming as face to face and technical uh, there might be there might be technical difficulties especially if you're using ano ah, internet web based collect data using online platform such as uh, that consist of audio or video cap capabilities such as zoom i think zoom web based interviews um, cost efficient and co convenient can be conducted despite of different location 
uh, there can be an uh, issue on software and hardware, possible technical difficulties then. So for example, factors that affect the decision-making process among voters in choosing politicians. How the student-teacher relationship affects the academic performance of the student. How a person's weight affects oneself, oneself concept. Okay, next naman is yung quantitative observation. So it involves following a structured uh, procedure in observation to acquire reliable information. Okay, so it, it, it involves the standardization of observed elements which are put into numerical context, make them measurable and quantifiable in nature. So the um, advantage of quantitative observation it makes insight and perspective through observation. Parang wala na, siyang, uh, wala na siyang interaction with the respondent. Parang mag-observe ka lang. For example, you want to check if mabenta ba yung product mo. So, yung iba ang ginagawa is binibilang yung mga labalabas at tumapas to store. So, parang example din siya ng quantitative observation. Okay, next, disadvantages, it may be subjected to bias. Yun nga, no? Since uh, wala kang interaction with the respondent and nagbe-base ka lang sa observation mo, like your own opinion, so it may be subject to bias. Observation mo lang yun, eh. Paano pala pag iba yung interpretation mo dun sa actions ng mga tao? Another advantage, behaviors of... Uh, behaviors and body language may be absurd. There may there may be little to no control over the environment. It can be done in group, making it cost efficient, and consciousness among respondents may bring irregularities. So meaning parang kapag nag-observe ka din kasi di ba parang uh, parang nakaka-conscious din kasi pag feel mo may nag-observe pala sa'yo. So, for example, an observation on the number of people passing by a certain area to see whether the said location has active foot traffic. An observation on the attention span of students depending on the type of teaching strategy used. So, next naman is experiments. Involves manipulation of variables that test hypotheses. Uh, under conditions which may be controlled or not. It takes the form of laboratory and field experiments. So yun nga, um, minamanipulate natin yung isang variable and just to, just to check if may effect siya sa other variable. Like uh, putting fertilizer to the plants, yan, kung magugro ba siya, or if placing the plants uh, towards the sunlight mag-grow kaya siya. So, yun, uh, example of experiment. Laboratory experiment follow a scientific approach in terms of design and execution. The researcher has strict control over the research variables being experimented on. Yan. But meron kasi silang process dito, scientific process na sinusunod. So, ang advantage nito, it can demonstrate cause and effect relationships between variables. And the replication is possible. Disadvantage, results may be prone to extraneous or confounding variables. Another advantage, the researcher has control over the procedure. And the results may be difficult to genera generalize due to the need to continuously replicate. Parang katulad ng ano, yung mga experiment kung ano ba yung uh, vaccine na gagamitin. So, hindi lang pwedeng isang tao lang yung pwede mong pag-experimentuhan nun. So, you need to check if applicable ba siya sa iba't ibang tao. And then, you'll check kung ano ba yung mga difference ng ibang tao and difference din sa result nung, nung naging effect ng vaccine. Kaya hindi mo sila pwedeng i-generalize. Ayan. For example, the antibacterial effect of plants on wounds. 
Then combustion, uh, rape of fossil fuels. Field experiments takes, uh, take place in the natural environment. The researcher cannot manipulate variables and can only observe cause and effect relationships in nature setting, natural setting. Or parang observation din to, like you want to check if uh, if yung, yung mga behi like behavior ng plants, if natatamaan siya ng araw, ganun. Um, Tapos checking din if ano ba yung behavior din ng ibang halaman na natatamaan ng araw. And observation din ng mga ano, observation din sa mga animals, like sino yung pinaka-aggressive, gano'n, no? Para observation lang din ka. Field experiments, advantage, natural setting may enter high validity. Of course, wala siyang manipulation, so parang pinaka-ano siya, uh, pinaka-appropriate na result yung makukuha mo. Disadvantages, the researchers may have real control over the variables. And it allows to create more questions about the observed processes and activities. And it is prone to extraneous variables. It does not require strict control over the environment. It is difficult to replicate. Kasi, di ba, hindi mo na siya na manipulate. So, para maghihintay ka pa ng time kung kailan siya mag exist ulit. Okay, for example, an experiment on adequate uh, aquaculture based on pH level and temperature. An experiment on the ability of the certain plant to filter air. Okay, question is, how can the use of technology affect the choice of data collection method? So if you'll be using technology, pero pwede siya mapa, mas mapabilis yung ano mo yung data collection mo if you'll be using the technology no okay next guidelines in choosing a data collection method analyze the nature of your research and your variables assess availability of material resources Ayan, gaya nga na sabi ko, if gagawa ka ng research, unang-una mong titignan if yung possible na results ba na kailangan mo, yung, yung respondents ba, available ba sila, and madali bang i-access or else kayo yung mahihirapan. Prepare a timeline of the activities. Gumawa, kahit gun chart, pwede kayong gumamit nun. Okay. Uh, let's wrap, wrap up before we dismiss, before we end this discussion. And let's wrap, wrap up. So the primary data refers to the information collected or experienced firsthand, while the secondary data refers to the information interpreted based on the primary source data. The most commonly practiced data collection methods in quantitative research are administering quantitative surveys, quantitative interviews, quantitative observation, and experiments. And these data collection methods produce different types of quantitative data. Next, det determining the appropriate data collection method is important in gathering necessary information to analyze and produce accurate, valid, and reliable research results. Okay, so before we end, do we have any question regarding uh, quantitative research or uh, collection of data, met collection data method? Any question tayo, guys? If none naman, we can now end we can now end the class. So good night everyone. Happy Friday. Okay, bye. Uh yung business finance, bukas ko pa siya ma-upload. Wait nyo na lang. Bukas ko siya ma-upload. Okay, bye.
Thank you. 